Hello everybody! Today we are going to be watching Hulu's new original movie that is taking over the internet that is heavily inspired and heavily curated to be a commentary on the internet. Today we are going to be watching Zoe Deutsch and Dylan O'Brien's new movie titled Not Okay. Be careful what you f***ing wish for. <laughs> Through the recent years, I would say the past five years ever since streaming originals became actually popular and actually like credible movies, we have seen an uprise in movies based on influencers. It has become its own genre. You have movies like Spree, Mainstream, Ingrid Goes West, Not Okay. There are a lot of movies that try to commentate on influencer culture or influencers the, like the harm of influencers and online culture and they fall really flat because it always just seems like a parody of jake paul or logan paul and i'm very much over it today we're going to be watching not okay starring zoe duetch dylan ryan mia and isaac it's directed by quinn shepherd time to watch a complex female character die <laughs> content warning this film contains flashing lights themes of trauma and an unlikable female protagonist viewer discretion is advised should i start putting that at the beginning of my videos be honest why i'm not a cunt you're the cunt you're the fucking cunt bitch danny sanders acting like she was the victim i think that that turned a lot of people off to her i feel like Why was no one calling my line? Like, why was no one hitting me up, perhaps? Like, I mean, I was here. I was here the whole time. Anyone could have called me. I think they should have got one movie commentator on there. Whether or not it may be me, it should have been me, whatever. They should have got a movie commentary girl on there because, like, I guess it makes sense to have drama channels on there as well, but I'm like, Movie commentary is kind of like that blurred line where it mixes into kind of that fourth wall break of it's like a movie commentary. But then it would be like, why is a movie commentary channel speaking on an influencer drama? Because that's not what we do. But then again, they have Best Dress in the video. And she's not a drama channel. So don't try to excuse your way out of not contacting me. Don't do it. I don't feel like you take me seriously as a writer. That's because you're not a writer. The multicolored nails and the chunky rings, the mini bags, the phone charms, oh, the wildflower case. But wildflower cases are always on trend. You just have to, you just have to get the new one. <laughs> Hi, Harper. That's Hannah Harp. I can't believe they casted real influencers from the 2010s. I cannot believe I've watched two Hannah Hart acting gigs this year. We're going queer bowling. Yes, queen, slay. <sighs> I think she needs an Oscar nominee for that delivery right there. My old best friend from high school or something. <gasps> they didn't even see her do that, but they felt it. They felt the energy of that hand movement and they said, don't do that. If Hannah Hart's looking at you and going, you should be worried. You should be worried and you should be fearful and you should be running. Colin. Oh shit, what up, honey? Oh my god, Colin! He's supposed to be Coulson. Machine Gun Kelly. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh my god, this is turning into Good Morning by Machine Gun Kelly. This is like, weed is funny. So, the director saw one of those videos on YouTube where it's like, I faked a trip to Europe for a week. And she was like, that's good. That's actually really good. Is that a guinea pig on her? That has to be a guinea pig on her desk. Shit. She just doesn't need to go. Will they know that we're on drugs? <gasps> the G-Force. What do you suggest I do? Pooping his hand. Pooping his hand. She looks good. But do people really care about one person going to Paris that much? I love the way they're showcasing all the pictures. I think it's really interactive and fun and I love it. And it reminds me of an old French pop art movie. Ooh, that's just a song that's making me think that. Although officials have not identified a suspect- The Riddler? Are you kidding me? Well, that makes sense actually. That's not even, that's not unserious at all. That makes so much sense that the Riddler would do that. 
Hey guys, guys, thanks for all your comments. And she's gonna become the Riddler. That'd be interesting if she became the Riddler because she becomes obsessed with followers as well. Really hope you're okay. Question mark? Why is there a question mark? Really hope you're okay? Really hope you're okay. Really hope you're okay. Really hope you're okay. <laughs> Oh, you don't wish how bad I wish this turned into a horror movie. I wish this was like the worst movie in the world, Assassination Nation, and this social media hate train turned into a horror movie. I wish it was that. I wish it was that bad. That's amazing. There's something about it that is just so bad, yet it's so good. And how does it feel when the world looks that way to you? Just sort of numb. <laughs> Doing that in a support group was actually so vile. Like, pause. Doing that in a support group should be fine. Like, you should be fine for doing that in a support group. I'm really sorry, but like, something bad needs to happen to you. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> oh my God, Hannah Hart is gonna freaking snipe her. <gasps> Hannah Hart is gonna freaking expose her. That's so funny. That's actually so funny. I think I can handle like one troll on Twitter. I've been through a lot worse, right? Right, yeah, of course. Maybe that can strike up a conversation. That's crazy, is that once you get into the influencer, once you get once you get people's attention, it is this very egotistical mindset where it's like, nothing can happen to me. Where people are hyping you up so much, not saying that that has like necessarily happened to me, that I've been hyped up so much because I'm just so cool, but it is this, really intense extreme of love and once that love is turned down a notch and then hate is incorporated it can't help but feel so drastic and I think that's what people don't prepare for whenever they start doing things online you see it when these new spaces pop up for people to get popular on you see it when people have tiktoks that go viral and people love them and then they do one response video and then people hate them all of a sudden it's the whiplash of it all it's the whiplash of the super high extreme love to the influx of hate that kind of drives you insane this audience creator relationship is not just an isolated event that is only happening to people who choose to make content creation their job it's happening to people who are just average users it's happening to the fans of the content creators it's widespread and that's what i don't see a lot of people talking about is that we talk about these influencers and we talk about this online hate but we don't talk about that it is not just an isolated incident and it's not just happening in a vacuum it is a lot more than that what's there to do to fix it i don't know go watch cyberbully maybe that'll help you because that helped me i don't know bad i think the style of this movie is probably the best like the subtle the subtle ways that they incorporate the style, aspects of influencing, cultural appropriation, sexualization of a sheep bow, like, I get it, and I think that's great. Energy drink. An energy drink is a lot more on brand. People have come and gone with the teeth whitening. Super green powder. I've seen that a lot. Appetite suppressant lollipops and better help. We got now like 20k followers? Uh 32k actually. Shit. Okay. Hey, cheers. That is that. not some pause. Pause. I'm so sorry. <laughs> like that is not something that people go like, really? Like no one like looks at you if you have like 32k followers and it's like oh my god like i'm just like that's just like not that much like it's great but it's not something like for all of this for someone who started a movement a viral sensation movement she would have more than thirty-two thousand followers if her 
tweet was going trending if their article went trending she should have a lot more followers she should be verified on twitter because we know every single fucking journalist and their mother is verified just because they can say they're journalists and they get verified that's why you see journalists with 200 followers verified i have more than 30,000 followers so. and i wear real sheep house that aren't sexualizing a white woman's body yeah you heard it here first bitch hey fuck terrorists Hey, come on. Fuck Terrence! Fuck Terrence, yo! Fuck, fuck you even doing? I just got that. <laughs> I literally just got that. That's a reference to freaking Tana Mojo in the club during a pandemic saying fuck COVID. Listen, we don't fucking care. Sorry. This is how you know. I'm a real girl. I know things. I know a lot of things. The things I know you would be shocked by them. The thing is, is that I know about this movie. You know what I know about this movie is that I know there was COVID references in it and they cut them out. Someone saved them. Someone saved that script from having influencer COVID jokes. I know it. I know it. I know it. Thank God they cut them out because if they were still in there, this would be a completely different movie and people would hate it. They would hate it. What the fuck is that? It's my shorts. Oh my God. The most unsexy Dylan O'Brien sex scene you've ever seen. And that's below the first time, which that was crazy as well. Did you just come at me? Oh my God. Oh, but this is kind of iconic. A Diet Coke and a Plan B is kind of a serve if I've ever seen one. It's yeah, fun it, though, right? It would be nice to not be alone. Up yeah. There. I got your back, sis. Oh, she is such a dick. She is such a dick. Cause why would you replace, why would you say sis right there? That is a child and you are manipulating her. Well, you're manipulating everyone, but specifically a personal relationship with a child. You are manipulating her and having her fall for this big sister role you're disguising yourself as. That's ridiculous. You know, Harper, you'd probably get your own office too if you just worked on that positivity a little. Even though Hannah Hart is like right for like snooping around Danny's business, like she's also kind of a bitch too. Damn, she still got that backside on her though. Got the thicky, that fatty, right? Colin, you're from Maine. I know Dylan O'Brien thinks he's doing the like comedic role of his lifetime and it's not funny enough to me like i know it's satirical i know like the character he is is supposed to be a caricature of these types of people in real life i'm just saying it's not funny enough to me and i've seen him in like be way funnier in roles like i've seen dylan o'brien like literally make me like crack up in some of his roles this is supposed to be like really funny and it's not. And I'm wondering why the funny parts are not funny. Because even in satirical commentaries, there are still bits of comedy that work really well. You almost had me bring it up. I almost brought up Glee because Glee is like super funny, but it also has a lot of satirical comedy bits on real life and real subject manners. Sometimes they do a good job and sometimes they don't. That's another discussion we will talk about on another day because it does not play relevant to this right now. But I feel like whoever wrote the script thought that like this character of Colin was supposed to be really funny and like supposed to be this really cool like, you know, ha ha, like it's Machine Gun Kelly, it's Pete Davidson, like ha ha. And we're all sitting here like, this is the fifth one of these characters mocking these types of people that we've seen this year. I get it, but like you can't just copy and paste something and think that it's gonna make me laugh. That's a crazy character point that she took out her AirPods, left them not in a case and left her laptop playing open. Like you're disgusting. Talking about, where were your first day back at work? You talked about how sunny and clear it was all morning before the bombings. Well, I remembered reading it was raining. Oh my god, I can't believe you're obsessed with me. I didn't have proof. Until I saw this. You have to burn those, babes. You have to burn them. I'm gonna give you two options here. 
you can either wait for me to write an article exposing you, which would be really good for my career. Or I will give you the opportunity to tell everyone yourself. I would be devastated if a BuzzFeed article said to me. Or I'm going to write an article exposing you. That would be the end of me. That would actually be the day that something drastic has to happen to me because what? Very permanent measures have to be taken towards myself that day. She should fake her death. The only thing worse than pretending that you survived a Paris attack is pretending you died. And you've already lost everything now. No one loves you, Danny. Fuck you. Do you see how I'm speechless right now? I'm speechless. This is the best act of the movie, this final act, which makes sense. What do you say to your child who has done that? Like, seriously, what would you say to your child who faked being in a terrorist attack? Like, there's nothing I can say to you. Like, I don't even know how I would compute that if someone I knew did that. I would be, like, there's nothing you can say to that. So maybe one day I'll forgive you, but we will never be okay. If anything's gonna come out of this movie, it needs to be Mia Isaac getting more roles because she's taken over this movie. Like she's the best thing to come out of this movie. This entire watch, I've only been entranced by her performances. That's probably the only thing that is keeping me in it. Like, it should not be, the ending should not be about Danny going up to her and apologizing and getting to say sorry and making herself feel better for making amends. And it's like, of course, Danny, everyone's going to recognize you. You have the same fucking hairstyle and the same nails that you did at the beginning of the movie. Dye those pieces. No one will be able to tell who you are. Okay, there is so much that needs to be said. And <laughs> Today's video is sponsored by Raycon. I've talked about Raycon before and I'm here to talk about them again. You guys know I love me a pair of Raycon earbuds. I just use them today for my workout. We have a bunch of B-roll footage of me sweaty in my lovely Raycon Everyday Earbuds. Raycon's Everyday Earbuds feel and look better than ever. With optimized gel tips that fit your ear just the way you want them, they are super comfortable. And a side note, they will not budge. You can see me right now shaking my head, doing some running, doing the most, and nothing's coming out. Oh. Raycons offer eight hour playtime on a 32 hour battery life. So this means during your workout, during your work, during your errands, Raycons are not dying. And that's one thing that as the gym bros say, there's nothing worse than your earbuds dying in the middle of your workout. They, they might be onto something. There's tons of features of Raycons that are great. The touch feature is a great feature because you can play your music, you can pause your music, you can skip the song, you can answer calls, you can end calls, and you can even decline calls if you want to. And not to mention, they also have a great noise isolating fit and the sound quality is supreme at half the price of other audio brands on the market right now raycons have a great stereo sound and passive noise isolating so this means the noise will be blocked you will be able to have a clear sound on what you are listening to you're not going to have the rest of the world trying to impact your sound and if you are a sweaty girl like me or if you're clumsy or if you are forgetful Raycons are super durable and they are sweat and water resistant. So this means if you forget them in your jean pockets and they get into the wash, you're good. You're okay. Your earbuds are not going to fall apart. If you are overwhelmingly sweaty like me and you sweat a bucket every single time you go to the gym or even step outside in this Texas heat, this triple digit heat every single day, your earbuds are going to be fine at the end of the day. If you drop them in a puddle, if you wear them through rain, your Raycons are water resistant so they are going to be able to withstand these circumstances. And with all these features, you're probably thinking, these are some expensive earbuds. These are going to cost me an arm and a leg. Well, you are very, very wrong because Raycons come 
come at about half the price of other premium audio brands on the market right now so you can get the same premium sound at half the price. And if you want to know how you can get your first pair of Raycon earbuds, you guys can either click the link at the top of the description or you guys can go to buyraycon.com slash trend to get 50% off your Raycon order today. And thank you very much to Raycon for sponsoring today's video. There's not much to say during the entire movie. The first two acts is like surface level commentary on influencers and activism. And then the final act is where we really get this in-depth uh, storytelling piece, in my opinion. Now, do the first and second act build up to that? Of course it does. That's the whole point of a story. But I do think the first and second act are a bit lackluster to me. And why I say that is because it's like, it is what it is. It's surface level commentary, satirical uh, dialogue about influencers, about so uh, socialism, about performative activism, and that whole combo, if you will. I feel like people are going to kind of get on to me because I didn't love this movie as much as I anticipated liking it. I thought I was going to end up really enjoying the movie afterwards and it became sort of this mid movie for me. The best part of this movie is Mia Isaac and her performances. Her monologues are so strong. Her performances are so powerful. I hope she gets cast in so many more things after this because it was just the best part of the movie. Like there's no denying it. Even though Zoe Dutch is the star of the movie. Mia Isaac just takes the whole story to herself and really entrances you every single time she's on screen. I was kind of disappointed by this film. I thought it was going to be a little bit deeper. I don't know why I expected that because it, it's kind of this like gaudy, campy movie that also is kind of drama. Like it wasn't as funny as I thought it was gonna be either. I think that's what kind of got to me was that watching the trailer for it, you think it's gonna be a little bit more funny and you think the jokes that are going to be taken and used to beat down Danny are gonna be funnier and they're not. Um, that's probably the biggest criticism for me is that it's this drama comedy I think the serious parts in the third act are pretty well done, but then the comedy throughout it is just like not as funny as the trailer made it seem, in my opinion. As much as people are saying this is like, oh my God, it's so great how they like nailed influencer culture. Like I expected them to do that. Like, how could you not? It's like literally everything about influencer culture is handed to you on the platter. If you don't get it right, you're a you're so stupid. Like, <laughs> I have to say, films and media portrayals of influencers that get it wrong are so stupid. The things that it nailed were Mia Isaac's character, because she was amazing, and I think Danny Sanders' fashion. I think her fashion actually portrays a lot more than anything she says throughout the entire movie, in my opinion. I think the juxtaposition of her and Rowan at like the rally where she is like fully like done up and like and it, and it seems very disconnected from what's happening, this sort of mask that you put on. Whereas Mia Isaac's character is really raw, kind of laid back. Like the juxtaposition between their characters and how they present themselves, like it's pretty good. But I think where this film does get it right is the ending. I think the ending is so crucial. I think it is so crucial to not hear anything from Danny because usually at the end of any one of these protagonists of the story is a bitch or is unlikable. You get them saying at the end that they're sorry and they get to explain themselves and it's like they get this redemption arc. Having no redemption arc in this is the best choice that they have ever made. My overall thoughts on this movie is that the performances are really good, aside from Dylan O'Brien. I don't know why. They make it seem like Dylan O'Brien is such a main part of this movie, and he's just, like, freaking not. Like, I don't know why the fuck Dylan O'Brien is in every single PR interview for this movie when it should be Mia Isaac hand-in-hand -hand with Zoe Deutsch in these interviews. I don't know why... Dylan O'Brien is in all the press interviews. He's like in it for two seconds. And he has like, yeah, he's like the reason why she does all of it. But like, why is he in a, every single interview? Get Mia Isaac because she has one of the most prominent characters in the, she has one of the best, she is the best part of the movie. Let me know your thoughts on this movie. I know we're going to have a lot of disagreeing opinions. So 
Keep the comments coming. Um, this movie was way too similar to Good Morning by MGK for my taste, but that makes complete sense because Dylan O'Brien is supposed to be Pete Davidson, MGK, and a Paul brother wrapped into one. So they kind of nailed it in that aspect. Um, I'll see you guys later. Bye.